So then my friends, we saw in the last lesson that we could add this extra script tag with a load function inside it to fetch data, right? And then when it fetched that data, it returned a props object down here, which we accepted inside the other script tag that we have. And that exposed the data to our template so it could be injected into it. And when we initially request this page from the server, all of this code is run on the server and the page is pre-rendered on the server. But all of this code can also run in the browser as well. Remember, I said earlier that after we get the initial page back from the server, the website then behaves like a single page application, meaning that when we navigate to a new page on the site using some kind of link, Svelte intercepts the request for a new page and it handles the content change on the front end. So a new request never actually reaches the server. And that means for new page components, the JavaScript that we have here runs in the browser this time, not on the server. And in fact, even when this initial page lands in the browser, Svelte runs and executes all of this code in the browser again to hydrate our templates. So this code can run on the server and in the browser. And I can demonstrate that. What I'm gonna do is just log out the data that we get back from the request right here. And when this code runs on a server, we'll see the data logged out in the terminal down below. That's where the server side logs are seen. But when this code runs in a browser, we'll see that data logged in the DevTools console. So let's save this now and preview it. All right then, so I'm on the About Us page at the minute and I refreshed and then cleared out the console. Now, when I go to the Guides component or the Guides page, it's not actually gonna send another request to the server for a new page. Instead, Svelte is intercepting that and just swapping out the content to be that new component, the guides component. And when it does that, it's gonna run all of that script on the front end in the browser. So we should see all of the guides logged to the console over here, right? So let's try this out. View guides, and we do. We see all of the guides logged to the console. So this is proving that that script is running in the browser. And we can also see the data logged in this terminal here on the server. But why is this important to know? Well, it's because the kind of JavaScript that we can run in a browser is generally different to that that we can run on a server. If you think about it in the browser, we're used to doing things like querying the DOM using the window object. But that window object isn't used on the server and it's not available to us on the server. So if we try to use the window object in any of these scripts and the code ran on the server, we'd end up with a server error. So you can't write any code here that won't work on a server. Let me demo this. I'm gonna try logging out the window object to the console. Now in the browser, if the initial request is for a different page, like the about page, and then we go to guides, so all of that code is running on the front end, all of that script, then we see that the window object is right here and it's worked, right? However, if the initial request is for this page right here, if we refresh on this page, then we get a server error, 500, and it says window is not defined. And that's because when we send an initial request for the website for this particular page, it's trying to run all of that JavaScript code on the server, and it doesn't know what the window object is on the server. And also over here in the terminal at the bottom, we can see as well, there's an error, window is not defined. So that's why it's really important to understand that this code right here, both of these scripts can run on the server as well as in the browser. So you have to write code that is able to run on the server. So we can't do things like this and interact with the DOM using the window object right here. That will cause an error. Anyway, now we know the difference between server-side and client-side code and what we can and can't do here. In the next lesson, I'd like to talk about dynamic routes so that when we click on one of the links right here, which is a title, it goes to some kind of details page for that particular guide. And we're gonna incorporate the guide ID into the route.